Hey everyone, thank you for joining us for a Favorites with Friends. Today I have with me my friend Grace Cho. Hi. Hey Grace, thank you so much for being here. I'm we glad were, to be here. Yeah, we were supposed to get together a couple weeks ago, but your schedule and my schedule and summer, ah, it's just been crazy. So finally things are slowing down a little bit. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> Although we were just talking about all of our kids' schedules. Um, but yeah, I'm so glad we were able to make this work. I know. So for those of you who don't know Grace, or maybe you know Grace and you know me, you didn't realize we knew each other. Um, we didn't until just a few months ago right. when um, I decided to step down from the Encouraged staff team and they were looking for someone to fill the editorial spot that I had been um, kind of filling and Grace's name came to the top. And they hired her, and we had the privilege of working together for six months as we kind of transitioned mm -hmm. the workload from my plate to hers. <laughs> um, and it's been really fun to get to know her, which is kind mm -hmm. of like good news, bad news, because then it's like good news, I have a new friend. Bad news, we don't work together anymore. <laughs> I know. It's so sad. It really is. But I'm so happy to feel like I was putting my work into great hands and to, to meet someone new that I really clicked with. But now we don't have our weekly staff I meeting. It's, so. it's a bummer because you were the best. <sighs> well, the feeling is mutual. So I'm glad that we get to chat today and hopefully we'll have some friends join us. If not now, then later. And so we are just going to talk about one of your favorites. So my question for you, we'll yes. just dive right in. Is what is your favorite show, movie, book, whatever you're into right now? Okay, well, let's talk about Parks and Rec because yes. we both love it. We do. Um, I was recently on a work trip and there were calzones on the menu, and I thought Mary would know what that meant. Yeah, I but would. But no one sit at the table, and that was sad. That's <laughs> sad for you and sad for them. That they don't I know. know. I know. They don't know. They are missing out. They don't know that they're missing out. Oh, I mean, Ben Wyatt. Is he the best? Oh, my gosh. So much love for Ben and Leslie. Seriously. Um, I watch, I don't know how many times I've watched it, but I, th I don't know if you guys do this, but I like to have things on, just going on in the background for noise slash company. So yep. Parks and Rec is my go-to, um, along with The Office. Uh, so I just recently finished Parks and Rec again. <sighs> and I thought, it's just it's just so wise. <laughs> well, and I just, I was thinking about it earlier, because I was thinking about why do we love Parks and Rec so much? Uh -huh. I mean, it is funny. Like, it is genuinely laugh out loud funny. It's true. But for me, and I want to hear from you too, like for me, I love it so much because the characters love each other so much. They do. They're friends and family and they don't know it in the beginning. Oh my gosh. And just seeing them, you know, connect in different ways over the seasons. And I mean, I don't know that there's a sweeter fictional relationship than, well, it's kind of a toss up. <laughs> ben and Leslie. Okay. Or... Anne and Leslie. Okay. Who's so? Which combination is your favorite? Well, I I think I have to say Ben and Leslie. I because kind of like Ron and Leslie. Yes, that's a good one too because they're so different. <laughs> they're so different. They're, they're so, so different. They don't deny it. No. And love each other anyway they do. they're friends he doesn't know it but they're yeah, right oh my gosh the episode where like the season where it's been a flash forward and we mm -hmm. find out that they have not spoken in a mm -hmm. long time because mm -hmm. they had some falling out and when the the gang traps them together in the office <laughs> and they finally kind of duke it out and come back yeah. together yeah i mean i'm like <laughs> <laughs> i totally cried it's such a beautiful, realistic, in a crazy way, like in a wacky way. It's yeah. such a beautiful picture of friendship. I know. And reconciliation and how it 
it takes work and time and, but that people can come back together. I think it was just so sweet. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I love Parks and Rec. Um, I just saw a meme today that had a picture of Andy and April. Uh -huh. And it said, um, if a cat and dog ever got married, this is what it would look like. <laughs> and April, April says, she's like, she has her serious face and she says, people, people are going to die. And Andy's face is like, of oh, fun. <laughs> They're so cute together. That is perfect. <laughs> I also really love Ron's relationship with April. That yeah. pseudo like fatherly relationship and yes, where he's um, kind of a reluctant mentor. Uh, what was that? I uh, well, so he, like he's a reluctant mentor. Yeah, and the part where they um, she needs to find his key and they find it under the tree. Yes. Oh my gosh. <sighs> just so many things about that show. I just love it. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. I just. I feel like I love Parks and Rec with the same affection that they have for each other. I know. They're our friends. Do we have a daughter? They're my friends, guys. <laughs> so real. Okay, so you love Parks and Rec. I love Parks and Rec. But you mentioned that you have been watching something new. Yes. So on Netflix, there's a show called Kim's Convenience. Okay. And it's about a Korean-Canadian family who owns a convenience store. Um, and I had heard about the show on some, on something, I don't know, some article I read. Um, and so I thought, I thought it was interesting that it came to Netflix. I, I, I don't know if it was a movie first, but anyway, it's on Netflix and I don't see a lot of people that represent me that look sure. like me on the screen. Um, and specifically that represent Korean Americans. I'm a Korean American and I was born here um, in California actually. Um, but so to see the, even though it's Korean Canadian, there are so many elements, even about them owning a convenience store, a lot of, um, a lot of immigrant parents came and they owned liquor stores or convenience stores or um, dry cleaners or, or things like that. Um, and so to see it on the screen and to see it played out, um, so many of the dynamics are similar to me and my parents. Okay. It actually, it actually, and I think I was slightly hesitant to recommend it to anyone because I didn't know, one, is it good? Um, and two, is it not cringe worthy? Like, hopefully it's not um, cringy. And, and there are times when I see Asian Americans on the screen and whether they're, you know, stereotyped or whatever, um, honestly, sometimes it makes me cringe. And so I was nervous for that, for this show, but it, it's been great. I just watched um, an episode. I don't, I don't think there's more than one season, but episode 13. And I totally cried because it re reminded me of me and my relationship with my dad. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's been a surprising surprising show that's too. awesome i had i don't think i've heard of it um is it netflix original or just it happens to be on netflix now i think they must have bought them out or something that's but I, i'm pretty sure it's listed under netflix originals cool yeah. well i'm gonna have to check that out is it a is it a half hour like a sitcom or is it an hour yeah. yes it's definitely a sick sitcom and it um it's funny and it shows a lot of, I don't know if you've watched Fresh Off the Boat, um, which at times when I've watched it, it made me cringe, but they have the accent as well, you know, not the Chinese American accent, but a Korean American accent and uh, the Korean accent on um, on English, I suppose. So I thought they, they made it really well. I thought it was um, true to any kind of sitcom that we see. Um, there's, there's some cussing because it's Netflix, but right. but I think it's a good representation. Um, That's awesome. I'm gonna look that up. My story, yeah. Not uh, that my parents owned a convenience store; they didn't, but right. just the dynamics of it. Yeah. Sure, sure. That makes sense. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna look that up tonight, and I will link to it in the description once I get some information. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, we had a question in the comments. 
Ooh. from Caitlin. Hey, Caitlin, I don't know if you're still watching, but she asked if uh, we have watched Making It that has Nick Offerman and Amy Poehler. I've seen the previews, but is it out? Yes, I think maybe it's in the third week. I oh. missed it. And so I had to go, like, we have On Demand on our cable. So I watched the first episode on On Demand, and now I've DVR'd, I think, one or two episodes more. I love that he actually likes working with wood. Yeah, like, I think that his real-life personality is not that different from his Ron Swanson persona. Totally, totally. Um, so I really, I really liked the first episode. I thought it was just really... Um, well, I, like I've seen a lot of articles talking about, it's just nice. Aww. It's just something sweet and lovely, and um, we need a little bit of that, I yeah. think. Right does now. it feel like a reunion of sorts for the two of them? It does. It, well, it it doesn't necessarily feel like to me. I mm -hmm. thought it felt like it felt like they're always friends. Like this is just one more thing, one more way for them to hang out. Right. 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 Which is probably, I mean, I don't know how true that is, but it just felt like they're like, hey, let's do this thing. Sure, I'll see you tomorrow. I know. They're, that's what we want to believe. <laughs> yes, yes. So they are real people. Yes, they are. They're real friends. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, um, oh, Caitlin said that she binged the whole thing of Parks and Rec this summer. I know. I'm so proud of you, Caitlin, because you stuck out. I think the first season was a little hard to watch, but... Yeah, made it through. I watched when I watched it, like I watched I had to binge a few seasons to catch up to where it was on live. Mm -hmm. um, I did watch the first season, but then when my husband, I rewatched it with my husband last year, I think. Mm -hmm. And I said, let's just skip the first season and go straight into the second season. Cause I didn't yeah. want him to have any excuse for not loving it. <laughs> and he did. He loved it. <laughs> oh, good. Yay. I know you yeah. kind of have to start at season two and work yourself backwards, but yes. Like once you love it, I think the first season is palatable. Yeah. 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 But if that's your first introduction, it might be a little rough. Yeah. Yeah. That's what my friends tell me. <laughs> but yeah. Caitlin said the best part is when Nick laughs and it feels a bit like a creative British baking show, but without the food. Aww. That sounds fun. So yeah, if you like that, you might like making it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think it's pretty like family friendly, mm -hmm. which not everything is. Not so. everything. It's true. Yeah, a friend actually asked me yesterday. She's like, Mary, I need a clean TV show that I can have on when the kids are around, but when I'm just doing stuff like cleaning the house or doing dishes or whatever. I was like, I don't even know because I. Know. I I just don't watch, I don't watch my shows when my kids yeah. are around. Yeah. Not because I'm some super mom, no. <laughs> uh, but because I don't like them talking over my shows. Yeah. And of course they will. Thank you. Thank you. So I was like listing off all the different competition and game shows that I could think of that my kids watch that sometimes we'll watch together. Yeah. So. I feel like um, the days of, I mean, not that Friends was appropriate. For kids. No, it really wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> but I, I mean, I watched it when I was younger. Um, but yeah, there aren't a lot of those family friendly shows these days. There really aren't. And um, there are some like Disney shows. Yeah. That I think have kind of taken the place of yeah. like, the TGIF sitcoms that we grew up on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you have to sift through some garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Because some of them are so obnoxious. I know. I, I know. just, and so, yeah, my daughter is 10 and a half. And so she, for a long time, I didn't let her watch anything other than cartoons. Because mm -hmm. I'm just mm -hmm. super mean. Yeah. Um, but she watches some, like, Raven's Home, which is kind of a reboot of, it, whatever, Raven Simone, whatever her yes. show was when we were younger. Oh, gosh, now I don't remember, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I can't remember. It was a little bit past when I watched those kind of shows. Uh -huh. Totally, totally. Um, a bit too old, but anyway, so she watches that show, and there's Stuck in the Middle, and we watched mm -hmm. Girl World together, of course. Again, nostalgia for the win. <laughs> I know. I tried to um, make my kids watch Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood after I watched uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor. Oh, which yeah. I read Caitlin's post over at encourage.me. 
you should read it because if she writes about this movie. But I tried to make my kids watch it and it's a lot slower than yes. now or cartoons or, um, and so one, I appreciated the slowness because it was almost so slow that I, it was awkward. But I wanted them, I wanted them to understand his heart and to see, um, I don't know, have a different pace on TV. Yes. But it was unfortunately short lived. Yeah, I tried once we got into Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, mm -hmm. which my four-year-old, she has loved that. She's kind of moving past it, but for a long time, she really loved it. And I did try to pull up some old episodes of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and nobody here was interested. No. But I am anxious to see Won't You Be My Neighbor. I haven't seen it yet. So I, I hadn't read Caitlin's post about it because I haven't seen Oh. Yeah. I don't think it has spoilers, but it I mean, definitely I guess it's like it's a true story, so can it spoil anything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, another movie I want to see. I don't know um, what other movies you have on your list, but I want to see Crazy Rich Asians. Okay, I was going to ask you about that, but then I'm gonna. I'll be honest. I was like, is that is that weird if I ask you? Why? I don't know. Because I get <laughs> nervous. Because I don't want to say the wrong thing. You know, we've had these conversations. <laughs> I love you. Um, well, I was just watching, I think, uh, I want to say LA Times or New York Times or something. They did a video of the cast members talking about why this movie was significant and I started crying. Um, and it's similar to what the, um, what Kim's Convenience has been for me of just like, I didn't grow up watching people who look like me on the screen, right. let, let alone on the big screen, on a movie screen. So, um, and, and even if there were Asians in the movie, it was but like, let's say Lucy Liu, for example. She was probably one of the first people you're, you feel like she can do what everyone else does, you know, what the other Charlie's Angels can do. Right. Um, from my memory, that's, all, that's who I can think of. But aside from that, they've all been stereotyped or they're in very, very Asian um, roles, as mm -hmm. in East Asian from, Asia roles and right. not the hyphenated Asian, like Asian Americans, Korean Americans, Chinese Americans. Right. And so that's what I'm excited for because um, I think a lot of the actors are hyphen hyphenated Asians. And I don't know if that's a term that we use all the time, but it's a term that I've been using because not all of us are Asian Americans. And, and so I'm really excited. I haven't um, read the book, but I, I feel okay about it this time. I don't know. I usually want to read the book before watching yes. a movie, but this time there's something different. Like I see people who look like me at church, mm -hmm. at predominantly Asian church, um, but not in a place where it's dominated um, mostly by faces that don't look like me. Um, sure. So, well, that from my understanding and just my experience with media, there are books out there that feature almost all Asian or Asian American mm -hmm. characters, mm -hmm. but not, I mean, not in the movies. From what I read, this is the first one, the first movie since Joy Luck Club that has all Asian or Asian American, hyphenated Asian um, actors. Yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah. And, and just it comes out tomorrow, wait, what's today? It comes wait, out no, Friday? The, is it, I think it's this week sometime, yeah. Actually, or that it already came out. Did it it might out? it might be out today. I think it came out today, which is a weird time for a movie to come out. But yeah, I'm remembering because I, I typed it in my what to watch post or, um, over the weekend. It comes out today. Okay. I do have the book. I got it from the library. Oh, did you? I have not opened it <laughs> <laughs> because I really do. Like, I always want to read the book before I see any movie. Um, okay. But I haven't done it yet. And I really want to go see the movie because everything I've read, everything I've heard says that it's fantastic. Yeah. And not like, and not fantastic. Like it's good for an Asian movie, which, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. it's good. And it's a romantic comedy. It's the thing that so many of us, especially us women have been saying, where are these movies? Yes. What happened to them? Right. 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 Well, I will tell you side note. Yes. I have been doing very difficult research for a post 
about the romantic comedies that are out there, but you haven't seen them. Oh. Because they do exist. And Wait, so I, yeah, they do. Wait, and so I have watched I have, old ones. Nope. Current, like recent. Hmm. I have done the really hard task of watching movie after movie after movie <laughs> for my people. This is what I do for my people. <laughs> so like a lot of them have not been, I think they've been, you know, direct to video or very limited release. Mm -hmm. So not a big widespread release like Crazy Rich Asians. Um, right, right. But but thinking about that movie coming out is what prompted me to be like, okay, we say there aren't romantic comedies, but are there? So anyway, yeah. that's just I'm a little excited. side note. It's my favorite genre to watch, but oh, I feel like I feel like I haven't watched one in a long time. Definitely have not watched one where it's an um, you know a predominantly Asian cast or an all Asian cast. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we've never been portrayed um, in a quote unquote normal way. As right. in, this is my normal life. We want to fall in love just like everybody else, you right. know. Right. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited to watch that. I'm hoping to get a couple of people to go watch it, but. Yes. Yeah. Well, I hope you get to see it this weekend. Yes, I hope so too. So oh, I, I'm not sure. We have a busy Saturday, but maybe I can squeeze into my Sunday. We'll yeah. I feel like it's one of those movies, at least for me, I wonder if it would be fine watching it on my own, just because mm -hmm. I know it'll have a deeper impact on me. Sure. Uh, makes sense. In different ways, you know, so, or to watch it with girlfriends. Um, yeah. And have a similar experience. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see. I hope I get well, to I can't it. wait to hear what you think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And I'm going to check out Kim's Convenience. Yes. I wonder what how it would feel for for people who haven't had that experience and will it be funny? Will it be annoying? You know, like I I wonder what the what the reactions will be. Well, I will let you know what I think. Yeah. Unless yeah. I think it's annoying and then I probably won't say that. <laughs> I know, I'm like, wait, I maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> um, I can't imagine it will be annoying. I bet it will be I bet it'll be great. It might seem novel because it's, it would, you know, a different okay. experience than mine. But right. I do, um, I, you know, I like learning about different experiences. So I'm Which excited. I appreciate you. Oh, well, I appreciate you. <laughs> and I appreciate you chatting with me and our friends watching the, the live video and watching later. Mm -hmm. um, I want to make sure that everyone can find you. So, Grace, where can people find you online? You can follow me on Instagram at Grace B. Cho. I'm okay. at Grace B. Cho on everything. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Okay. I probably have a Pinterest, but I have not updated that in a very long time. Well, we will you not send anybody there. I <laughs> <laughs> um, you can also find me on my website, gracepcho.com, uh, and over at Encourage, which is where awesome. I write and edit. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, well, that kind of wraps it up for today. So um, thank you for chatting with me. I hope everybody gets to check out Kim's Convenience, Crazy yes. Rich Agents, and For mm -hmm. the Love. If you have not watched Parks and Rec, do it now. Yes, do love it. it. You'll thank us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye, everybody. Bye.